Regardless of what you're doing and who you're doing it for, there are people out there that are waiting with bated breath to hear from you, to be able to learn from you, to be inspired by you, and more importantly, to invest with you in their own growth. Welcome to the Think Media Podcast. My name is Heather Torres, the host of this show. And on this podcast, we help you grow your influence on YouTube and then turn that influence into a high impact and a high profit online business. And today's episode is brought to you by our Think Masterclass. If you didn't know, here at Think Media, we teach free classes every single week that will help you learn how to grow your YouTube channel. They're not on YouTube. They're not on the podcast. This is a one hour free class that you can register for. Sit on demand at any time, watch that class and then learn how to grow your YouTube channel. So if you've not already registered for our next upcoming class, you can do that at thinkmasterclass.com. Now here on the podcast, we are releasing new episodes every single Tuesday. So make sure you are part of our hashtag Tuesday ritual and subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast. Also, if you have a friend who needs to learn how to grow a YouTube channel, then definitely send them the link to this podcast because this might be the episode for them. I'm excited because today's episode is actually from one of our Grow With Video Live sessions. We are in the countdown right now to Grow With Video Live 2022. And so for that, we wanna send you some exclusive content here on the podcast of some of our previous uh, conferences that we've had, some of our previous sessions. And today's guest is none other than Chris Decker. He is the author of Youpreneur, and so much of what he's built online is because of the power of understanding personal branding. We're teaching that this year at Grow With Video Live 2022 in May in Las Vegas. And so I wanted to give you just a taste of what growing your personal brand online can do for you. So let's jump into today's featured content, and then we'll recap cap at the end. Over the next sort of 15 to 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be zipping in and out of my business of you ecosystem ladder. And this is a five-step process, a five-step process that you can utilize to be able to build that future-proof business based around, honestly, the people that you want to serve first and foremost. But let's face it, you know, we spend a lot of time, quote unquote, at work, right? So it's important, if you think about it logically, it's very important actually that we enjoy what we do while we are at work. Otherwise, what we've got actually is just a job. We don't want jobs, we wanna build businesses and that's what it's all about. So this ecosystem is much like a lot of other businesses that have ecosystems attached to it. One that you might probably be quite aware of no matter where you are in the world is the Coca-Cola company. Coca-Cola obviously had been around for eons, for decades and decades and decades. And it all started with one bottle of pop, as we would call it here in the UK, or one bottle of soda, as my American brothers and sisters would say. And that is the good old-fashioned Coca-Cola, that classic Coca-Cola product, right? Where the moment it enters into your mouth, you instantly get a toothache. You know that you know that Coca-Cola that I'm talking about. However, the good news is the Coca-Cola and the smart people at that company have also decided that they can't just have one product. You've got to diversify. You've got to, you know, put some level of redundancy in place and therefore create an ecosystem of products around one major product. And then obviously, those will obviously grow and build and and run at their own speed as and when they enter the market as well. Now, I started doing this with my uh, youngest company, which just turned five years. I own three different businesses. The oldest is almost uh, 13 years now. The other one uh, in the middle is 10 years or so. But my youngest business baby is Youpreneur. And we actually opened the doors to Youpreneur back in late 2015. We've just hit our fifth year anniversary. And we opened it with a monthly membership. And that monthly membership was set up primarily to help people build a business based around their personal brand, right? So if you're an author, a coach, 
a speaker, a content creator of some variety, a live streamer, YouTuber, podcaster, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing, whoever it is that you're serving, you are a personal brand, right? Particularly for video creators, particularly for YouTubers, that's exactly what we do. People tune in for us first and foremost, right? And then for everything else that we do thereafter, particularly, obviously, if they hit the subscribe button. So, over the course of the last five years, however, what started as a very relatively small online community has built itself up to a full-blown ecosystem of products and live events and coaching programs and courses and even merchandise sales as well. And I'm going to go through the exact system that I used to be able to, head, to go ahead and actually create this ecosystem for myself and for our business and for obviously everybody that we serve. But I'm also going to show you how other people have done it as well. So one face that you probably will recognize is Amy Landino. She is a YouTuber. She's been on YouTube for many, many, many years indeed, uh, initially under the brand of Savvy Sexy Social. And then she kind of rebranded this off at Amy TV. And she's all about helping people go after the life that they truly want and desire. Now, Amy started off, like I said, on YouTube, and she's still super duper consistent when it comes to her YouTube uh, publishing and making sure that she's hitting all of those or ticking all of those boxes when it comes to being discovered and all the rest of it as well. But over time, she's gone ahead and written and published books she's gone ahead and put together systems and courses for people to take to be able to learn how to do what she has been able to do as well. And even just more recently has put together her first ever physical planner product as well. And these particularly, uh, they tend to be relatively popular with YouTubers, particularly lifestyle YouTubers, right? Sort of plan your day, plan your work, plan your goals, that sort of type of thing. She sold out 500 copies of this planner actually in less than 48 hours, I think like 33 hours or something like that. So Amy is the perfect example of that personal brand utilizing video, but now has obviously flourished and grown a business based around what she did on YouTube. Another person that you definitely do know is this guy right here, my buddy, Roberto Blake. I love Roberto Blake. I often say, other than Sean, and I have to say this, obviously, because it's his event. Other than Sean, Roberto is the guy that I turn to when it comes to learning how to do YouTube right. But again, hustling like crazy, building out a great channel of dedicated subscribers, developing all these opportunities for people to be able to learn and become inspired in, with what they're doing, going ahead and creates a podcast. It's not even a video podcast, a regular audio podcast that people can tune into to be able to learn even more from Roberto. He's put together, you know, physical products or rather digital products that be able to help people to kickstart their YouTube uh, uh, kind of channel on their presence on YouTube and make sure that they're looking good and feeling good when they're on video. And he's also got a membership community where he charges obviously a regular monthly fee for people to be able to access exclusive content that he serves up on a regular basis. Now, this is all part of that ecosystem that I showed you earlier on. We just happened to get going with our monthly membership, but up until that point, I was actually already building my own personal brand. And I remember somebody asking me at a conference, probably in late 2012, they asked me, you know, how do I build a personal brand? And honestly, I didn't have an answer for them. Although retrospectively looking back at that conversation, it was clear that I had already been doing it. In fact, actually, I've been doing it for many, many, many years indeed. And the reason why is because our personal brand is basically what people say about us when we're not around, right? Like when we're not at that conference or when we're not at that dinner party or when we're not at that coffee meeting, right? What are people saying about you when you're not around? That right there is your reputation and ultimately it's your personal brand, right? So I want you to kind of just you know, either grab a quick snapshot of this, put it up on the socials, tag me at Chris Ducker. Let me know what you think of this and anything else that we're going to be going through today. 
I will say though, that there's one thing that so many people are falling or tripping over uh, when it comes to this particular journey, and that is imposter syndrome. You know what it's like, right? We pick up our phones, we start scrolling through our favorite social media feeds, and we start looking at what other people are doing. Oh, their lives look so much more in check. Their lives look so much more calculated. Their lives look so much more successful. You know what I'm talking about. This imposter syndrome is killing our generation of entrepreneurs. And I don't use that term lightly at all. There are people stressing out. They're burning out because of this. And here's the thing. You cannot, you should not, and you absolutely should stay away 100% from comparing somebody else's 100th step or 200th or 500th step to your first step, to your eighth, to your ninth, or to your 20th step. Let me know what you think about this in the comments as well. I'd love to be able to read back and look back on this one. Likewise, our job really here, when we talk about building the business of you, it's kind of like it's the business of us. It's the business of me, right? Like our job is to become somebody's favorite. Let me say that again. So it, it, it kind of really gets into your brain. Like your job is to become somebody's favorite. Grab a piece of paper or a pen. What are the things that you do right now? What are you doing right now that will help you become somebody's favorite? You've got to jot them down. Lean into doing more of that. Be unapologetically, uniquely you at all times when you're building the business of you. Because if you don't, you're going to trip up at some point. You don't have to live somebody else's life particularly on the internet. Just live yourself. Live your own life. Become somebody's favorite. Somebody's favorite YouTuber. Somebody's favorite podcaster. Somebody's favorite author. Somebody's favorite cartoonist. Somebody's favorite business coach. Health and fitness coach. It doesn't matter what it is. Just become somebody's favorite. And what happens when you have that mentality and you go into this with that mentality, your vibe ultimately attracts your tribe, right? Your vibe attracts your tribe. However, before anything can happen with any of this, we need to get clear on how we'll actually serve those that we attract into our ecosystem. And this leads me to a really important exercise that I cannot stress enough for everybody to make sure that they do. Whether it's today when the conference is over, maybe in one of the break times, or maybe you know at the end of this entire thing a couple of days from now, you absolutely must work on your personal brand statement, that youpreneur personal brand statement. Here's my statement. My personal brand statement is, I help people become the go-to leader in their industry and build future-proof businesses. I want to break this down because it's important to do this. There's two different sections of this statement, which are incredibly, incredibly important for you to capture and understand. And it's based on the benefits of working with me as a business coach, as well as the outcome of working with me as well. Let me break it down and show you what I mean. First up, I help people become the go-to leader in their industry. That's a benefit right? It's a benefit to be seen as the go-to expert, regardless of what niche you're in, right? I say niche and not niche, because I know there's probably more American people tuning in than there are British. But hey, niche, niche, potato, patata, chamomile, chamomile, whatever. I don't know. We could go all day on this. But there's that first section right there to help people become that go-to leader in their industry. That's the benefit. The outcome of me working with them is that I will help you build a future-proof business. It's a business that is not going to be affected or very likely to be affected by any outside forces because when you build the business of you, it's 100% in your hands all the time. So that's your personal brand statement. I want you to consider that. Start breaking it down right now. A benefit of working with you or buying your products or using your service, whatever it is, and then the actual outcome of doing so as well. The whole point in this is that we market like 
a magnet, right? Just like at first, what happens is when you utilize a magnet, you're attracting the right people into your ecosystem. You're attracting the right people to your YouTube channel or your podcast feed. But at the exact same time, and this is why it's so, so incredibly exciting, is that you are repelling away, just like a magnet does. It attracts and repels. You are repelling away the people that should not be in that ecosystem. You know, the types of people that on day 29 of your 30-day money-back guarantee, they're going to email wanting their money back. We don't need those people in our lives. We definitely don't need those people in our business sucking out our day, our time every day, right? So you attract the best and you repel the rest. Mark it like a magnet. You see, at first, when you get going, and a lot of you are probably a little bit further along here, but allow me to just recap for those that maybe are at the beginning of this journey that we're all on together. At first, what happens is you'll create content that you think, and that's the key word, hence the highlighted color on the screen, you think your audience will want to see from you. You know what it's like. You, you hit publish on your first 20, 30 videos, whatever it is, but then something miraculous happens. You find your tribe and that tribe wants to be around you. That tribe wants to spend time with you. This is a photo of one, probably about a third of the stage at our Upana Summit event, which takes place in London every November. Unfortunately, not this year, but I'll get over it. But they'll want to be with you. And then what happens is later on, once you build up those relationships with people, you'll then be able to figure out and realize that you can actually create content that you know, and this is where the power is, that you know your audience wants and needs from you, right? The answers to their questions, solutions to their problems. And that's where the real, real magic starts to happen. And this is where the business of you ecosystem ladder comes into play. I'm going to start breaking this down for you. Roll up your sleeves. If you've got a long sleeve shirt on like me, roll them up because we're about to get to work. First up, there are five main sections on the ladder. And no, you cannot achieve all five in one year. It doesn't work that way. You've got to put in your time. You've got to earn your stripes to use a nice military colloquialism. So first up, at the very, very beginning of this entire ladder, we have our building of our audience level. Now, this is actually something that carries on forever. Like you're always wanting to create new opportunities to be found and discovered by other people, right? But right at the beginning, we've got to have that focus on building your audience. Now, I know a lot of people tuning in this conference are going to be active on YouTube. And clearly, that's a great platform and it's where it's all the actions at right now. I get it. But don't forget, my friends, that you must build out your own hub, your own home as well. You don't own YouTube. Google does. But you can own whatever your name is, .com, like I do. And it's important that you build out that, own, that, that hub that you own fully, that you control fully. When you want to make changes, you make changes. If you don't want to and things are working well, you just leave it alone. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't utilize platforms like YouTube or a podcast, for example, to build that audience. And obviously, consistency is key here to show up very regularly. We should always be using these other platforms to build the business of you. But don't forget, you've got to own your own platform as well. So that's step one, building your audience. Step number two on the ladder is all about amplifying your message or spreading your message out. And then ultimately, starting to really zoom in on positioning yourself as that go-to leader, as that expert in your niche. Now, I want you to just think real quick, one or two things, jot them down, one or two things. What separates you from everyone else in your industry? That's actually going to be what positions you as an expert, but what separates you? I'll take a sip of water and I want you to think about that just for 10 seconds. Make some notes. 
How do you start and grow a YouTube channel that makes you money and also makes a major impact in the lives of people? It's safe to say that YouTube is the most popular video platform in the world. It's the second largest search engine and the second most popular social media platform. And now it has over 2.3 billion monthly active users. That's a lot. But how do you stand out in the rising competition? What are the newest features and the best strategies working right now to get views? What are the most proven ways to build your personal brand? You'll learn all of that at the number one YouTube marketing conference for entrepreneurs and business-minded content creators. Grow With Video Live. Secure your ticket today at growwithvideolive.com or you can click the link in this post to secure your limited time discounted ticket. Okay, whatever that is, you gotta lean more into that. And by the way, I'd love to see anybody that handwrites notes and things like that. If you want to take a photo, tag me on Instagram at Chris Ducker in your stories. I'd love to see your notes from today's session. Genuinely, I get a real kick out of that, like most speakers do. So when we talk about amplifying your message, we talk about positioning yourself as an expert. Yes, the press is there and we want to try and get a hold of all of that. And I've been very blessed to be uh, talked about and featured in all of these outlets. But in today's world, if I had to pick one particular way to amplify my message and spread my message, it would be via becoming a guest on people's podcasts. For me, without a doubt, without a doubt, it's brought more people into my ecosystem as a strategy or a tactic than any other that I've worked on. So generally think about the, and, and by the way, you don't want to be on every podcast that's on iTunes or Spotify, just the ones that are relevant to your customer base, just those that are relevant to those that you personally are wanting to serve. The next step on the ladder is all about leveraging your community to continue to spread that message, maybe even potentially publishing a book or even launching and growing a membership as well. This is about having that community around you. It's about getting people into your world as much as possible. And it's not an ego thing. I want to clarify that. I know I look very happy in the middle here, maybe somewhat enraptured with joy, some might say. But the fact of the matter is, as I stand there with my two daughters and my sons, my, and my wife, they're just um, uh, below me there, that right there is my highlight of the year, being able to have not only my family, but also all of these incredible community members around me. It's absolutely huge. And what do you think they're doing when they're at my live event with me? What do you think they're doing when they do anything with me, even online? They're talking about it. They're sharing what's going on. So think about what you could potentially do in the next eight 12, maybe 18 months or so when it comes to bringing your community together on a regular basis. And it doesn't necessarily need to be in person. This is the inside of the Youpreneur Academy, our membership. Please, you know, don't, don't, don't try and get too many people into a Facebook group either. Facebook groups are great for everyday kind of chit chat type stuff, but don't give you, too, don't give too much of your soul away to a Facebook group. Okay. Because again, you don't own Facebook. Zuckerberg and his buddies do. You want to try and get them off of other people's platforms and onto your own. So think about a membership. Think about putting your overall philosophy as a personal brand entrepreneur, somebody building a business based around themselves, their personality, what they stand for. Think about putting that philosophy in the pages of a book as well. If nothing else, it becomes the most perfect $15 business card for you when you're meeting prospective customers or event organizers, if you want to speak at them, and so on and so on. It's been absolutely huge publishing books. And I often say that, you know, publishing a book and putting a book out into the world is one of the easiest and fastest ways of establishing yourself as an expert as well. Step number four, I hope you guys are following me along quite nicely here. Step number four is all about taking what we've done so far. Maybe we're making a little bit of money at this point as well, which is always a bonus, obviously. But you can see it's a long game approach here. This isn't a cash grab in any way whatsoever. This is about playing the long game, right? So you, I'm a big basketball fan. I'm, I'm about as un-British 
as a Brit as you'll ever meet, actually. I'm all about the NBA, Boston Celtics. If there's any Lakers or Pistons fans in the house, we're not gonna, it's just not going to work out between us. But a big Boston Celtics fan, Larry Legend and all the rest of it, to use that analogy, this is about playing with the fourth quarter in mind. It's not just about having an incredible first or second quarter. This is about knowing that there's a long game ahead of us. We've got to conserve our energy. We've got to conserve our, you know, our plays. We've got to try and not utilize the same plays over and over and over again. And eventually with a little bit of luck, when the buzzer goes at the end of the game, we'll be victorious. Same thing when you're building a business of you. So we do this slowly, bit by bit. Step four here is about making more money quite frankly. It's all about making money from here on in. And if you're like any other entrepreneur that I've ever come across, chances are you quite like the idea of making money. And that's fine. And in fact, actually, if there's a time in this journey for you to get just a little bit selfish about profiting from all of this, now's the time to do it. It's okay to be a little selfish, not too selfish, not too selfish, but a little selfish when it comes to making money. Because if you don't make money, all you've got is another hobby. I don't need another hobby. I've got mouths to feed. So step four is about monetizing. And that's all about building out that flagship digital course that is a, a major port of call for anybody that comes into your ecosystem. Right out of the gate, you want to hit them with that straight away. This is where you can learn all my best stuff. This is the springboard you need to be able to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever it might be. You might even consider jumping on a stage or two, whether they be in person or maybe for the foreseeable future, virtually, just like this, with some speaking. You could even bring on board a group coaching program. Maybe you're working with 10 or 20 or even 100 people, one to many, not one-on-one, -on -one, one to many. And we're going to be talking into the different ways that you can monetize in the final section of this talk. So stand by for that. It's also about potentially maybe bringing on board some sponsors as well, whether it be for a virtual event like this, or maybe your podcast or your video show, maybe you're live streaming on a weekly basis and you've got a sponsor teed up for that as well. Whatever happens right now, this is about utilizing everything we've done up to this point from step one, building that audience, which is a very highly valuable commodity in today's world, amplifying that message, getting more people into your ecosystem, becoming the go-to person in your industry, leveraging that community to help spread the word through potentially maybe publishing a book or launching a membership. Now we're starting to monetize in bigger and better ways with step four. One of the favorite things for me to do is to speak. I love speaking on stage. It's one of my favorite, favorite activities. But also, opening up the doors to a group coaching platform has taught me, well, you know what, actually, it's great to be able to stand up on stage or present virtually in front of a camera and help people that way. But if I can work one to many with them over the course of a year, for example, then I get the opportunity to really truly affect change in their lives, in their business, in their mindset, to hold them accountable, to hold their feet to the fire, to make sure that they actually achieve their goals. That gets me out of bed in the morning. And at the very same time, it also helps me make a little bit of money as well. So I can continue to grow and do what I'm doing for the people in my community. Now, step number five, this is where we pour the gasoline all over that monetization fire. A multi-day conference is a given. There is nothing, nothing more special than bringing your people together in person. In person when it's not illegal to do it again. <laughs> you want to bring them in person and create those opportunities for them to be able to mix and learn about each other, to partner up with each other. I've even had people at my conference. I, I had, Many years ago, we held a conference and one of the attendees ended up getting engaged to one of the speakers at that event. Now, they broke up a few years after, but nonetheless, it works, right? This is all about that P2P or that people-to-people -people connections that so many people are striving for nowadays. It also gives you the opportunity to be able to create a high-end mastermind where you're bringing people together in person. 
And don't misunderstand, like when you start putting together big conferences where you can fly your own flags outside historic venues or whether you're on stage at the exact same venue, the exact same stage where they announced the prime minister in the UK, like this stuff right here is what people want to see when they're part of your community. And to be able to bring people into that inner circle, that high end inner circle where you're charging tens of thousands of dollars to be part of that intimate group. People want this now more so than ever before. And the reason why is because we all want to fast track our own journeys as much as possible. And here's the thing, regardless of what you're doing and who you're doing it for, there are people out there that are waiting with bated breath to hear from you, to be able to learn from you, to be inspired by you, and more importantly, to invest with you in their own growth and in their own advancement, regardless of what it is that you're going to help them with. They will be more than happy to invest in themselves and ultimately spend money with you in order to be able to download all that experience that you've got into their own data bank and speed up their own journeys. Again, it's not a cash grab scenario. This is about providing a service to other people based around your uniqueness and the people that you truly honestly want to serve. The thing here, though, is as we're building out this ecosystem, is to understand that you can only do one thing at a time, right? Remember that old acronym to focus, follow one course until success. It's very, very true. We can't multitask. It's a myth. There you go. I said it. Multitasking is a myth. Our brains are not wired to work on one or more than one really important thing at any one time. So, complete these parts of the ecosystem. By the way, this is just mine. It doesn't necessarily mean that yours is going to be identical. It could be very, very different. But complete these individual steps as and when you're building out your own ladder one at a time. You work on one set of goals to completion, and then you move on to the next one. But most importantly, most importantly, more than anything else, Understand that you must be seen to sell in order to build influence. If you're going to be just throwing out all of your experience, all of your expertise for free all the time, you're just going to be able to attract freebie collectors. You know the type of people. They sign up to every newsletter on the internet. They download the eBooks. They put them in a special little folder in their Dropbox and they never even open them, or very rarely will they read or go through the entire thing. You don't need those people. You might need them initially at the very beginning of building that audience structure, but sooner or later, you're going to have to create something that has a dollar amount attached to it. You must be seen to sell, please. And whatever you do, charge what you're worth as well. Always charge what you're worth. So this is our final stretch together here. The last 10 minutes where what I'm going to do is go through my starting five. You can see I'm a basketball fan. My starting five monetization strategies. When you've built, if we go back to the ladder very, very quickly, when you've built the audience, you've amplified everything, you've leveraged your messaging, you've worked with your community to build things out, you're starting to make money and you're doing well, with all of this involved, it has to start somewhere. And with the starting five monetization strategies, this gives you five ideas that you can get started with straight away. Not necessarily in rolling out, but at least planning, right? At least planning them. Number one is coaching. Now, I will say that this is not necessarily the most scalable approach of monetizing your expertise because obviously there's only so much one on one work we can do. One on one coaching, although it's the lowest hanging monetization fruit, it's not scalable because there's only so many hours in the day. And if you go in one on one with somebody, you are ultimately trading your time for 
dollars. Now, as long as you're charging what you're worth, we can live with that for a little while. But sooner or later, you might want to think about going from a one-to-one to -one to one-to-many approach with coaching or consulting. The second way that we can monetize our expertise is through affiliate marketing. Now, this is kind of almost like an indirect way. And Sean and the team at Think Media are ballers when it comes to this. Like they do incredibly well with affiliate marketing that they do. This is ultimately where you are given or you are giving a link to your viewers, to your listeners, to your readers, whatever it might be. And if they click on that link and they buy something, you get a commission uh, for it. Now, I will say there's the right way to do this. And then with most other ways of looking at making money, there's a wrong way of doing this as well. You don't want to just throw one option after another. You don't want to blanket your community with a whole different affiliate marketing deals. That's not going to help you in the long run. What you want to do is look at the two or three things, or three or four things that you feel your community needs above and beyond everything else to succeed in whatever it is that you're helping them with and set up good deals with those companies or with those service providers or product providers or whatever it is, that when you introduce new customers to them, you get a little kickback. Everybody's happy. Do it the right way. Don't do it the sleazy way. The third way to be able to monetize yourself is through your own products and services. So for many, many years, I've been uh, seen as an expert in the virtual staffing niche. Uh, and I'm still running two different businesses within that outsourcing and VA niche to this day. So virtualstarfinder.com, which is our VA recruiting hub, it was a no-brainer that I was to open up a business providing a service where busy entrepreneurs can find good quality Filipino virtual assistants. And to this date, actually, we've done over 8,000 VAs have been hired through our service in the last 10 years of being in business. So again, it's just about finding that gap in that market and going ahead and bridging it between whatever problem and solution there is out there. The fourth way to be able to monetize your expertise is through memberships. Now, it's not necessarily the most passive of income opportunities that are out there. However, it is a great way to be able to bring people together. And obviously, the beautiful thing about managing a membership um, kind of product or service is that you get predictable, reliable income on a regular basis. Whether you're billing people weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever it might be, it's that predictable, reliable income that, let's face it, every business owner loves the idea of having that in their ecosystem. And then lastly, events. As I alluded to not so long ago, for me, the most important thing that I do every year is I bring my people together. Now, although we're not doing it in person this year, we will figure out a way. In fact, we have figured out a way to be able to do it virtually, which we're letting our community know about a little bit later on in um, early October. But the fact of the matter is events bring people together. You want to be seen. And I want to put this kind of as I wrap up and, and sort of just if I can leave you with anything here, if I may, as a geek, I will use a Star Wars analogy for you to understand this. We don't want to be Luke Skywalker. As the heads of our communities, as the business owners of our companies, we don't want to be the hero. We don't want to be Luke. What we want to be is Obi-Wan. We want to be the wise old guide. We want to show our customers, our community members, our subscribers how to do things. Because when everything in the world goes back to quote unquote normal, whatever that might end up looking like, or whenever somebody discovers you and, and, and they watch just one single video and can change their lives almost instantly, if not a little further down the line, when we do that, as the Obi-Wan character, as the guide, and not trying to make it all about us with our sexy blue lightsaber like Luke does. It's all about helping our people in our communities. In fact, if anything, we want to be shining the light on our community members and on our customers as the heroes. We want our customers to be Luke. We can be Obi-Wan, if that makes sense. And bringing people together is what it's all about. That's my starting five when it comes to building the business of you. And to wrap up, I want to leave you with one simple thought. 
And as far as I'm concerned, although it might only be one man's opinion, I stand by this as a very, very strong opinion. And that is that when you build the business of you, it's 100% original. Remember what I said. It's about being unapologetically and uniquely you so that you market like a magnet, bring people into your world, bring them into the ecosystem, provide the solutions to their problems, because at the very core of every entrepreneur, that's what we should be doing. And that's what we should be focused on anyway. Forget all the bells and whistles and the vanity metrics of social media and all the rest of it. Provide a solution to people's problems. Lean into your uniqueness. Build the business of you. Because when you do it, it's 100% original and it cannot be copied ever. That's my time with you today. I very, very, very much appreciate the opportunity to be able to spend some time with you. Like I said, hit me up on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to know more about this stuff. And I'd love to see any notes that you've written down in anything at all. It could be in toilet paper for all I care. Take a snapshot. Make sure you're at Chris Duck and me on Instagram. I'd love to be able to converse with you. And Sean and the team, thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to spend some time with your community. Well, I hope that brought value to you. And man, isn't Chris just such a great teacher? I could listen to him all day because I love his accent and I love what he is teaching. He breaks it down so simply. So my question to you is, what is the action you need to take next? What one of those steps do you need to implement next in your business? And are you actually online to grow your personal brand? Have you thought about even just that question? I remember when I first started as an entrepreneur, I was nervous about what type of content I should be putting out there, who I was trying to reach. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I can tell you more and more as I've focused on building a personal brand, which just means putting Heather out online in a way that is helpful to other people and not in a selfish content way, it has been the catalyst of growing here, not on just the podcast, but just personally online. And so I wanna encourage you to take the steps and take the action items that Chris has given you and put them into action. And, I, and if you want to, we'll link down in the description box below, as well as if you're listening to this audio version in the show notes, all the places that you can go and follow Chris and uh, support what he is doing online. Now, again, that episode was a exclusive access for you as uh, being part of our Think Media family over here on the podcast from our Grow With Video live sessions. This year is going to be incredible. So if you have not gotten your tickets yet to Grow With Video Live, you can go to growwithvideolive.com and see the early bird access that we still have available for you. There's a couple different levels that you can go to. We have general admission, we have VIP, and then we're also offering a platinum experience for you business owner who's listening right now. So you can go to growwithvideolive.com We've got some incredible speakers coming this year that you don't want to miss. So growthvideolive.com is where you can go to grab those tickets. Now, if you have been a listener to this podcast for any length of time, you know that my favorite thing to do on every single episode is get to read your reviews. If you are over on Apple Podcasts, you can rate and review this podcast to help other creators and entrepreneurs just like you know that this is the place for them. And today's uh, listener is Barbara 87 J. Barbara says, this is a must listen. I've learned YouTube marketing, hiring a team, online marketing, course creation, affiliate marketing, and so much more. This is one of my top podcasts. Jay Barbara, thank you so much for being a part of our community. It means so much to me to see that we are helping you grow, not just your YouTube channel, but also your team, your business, and helping you learn how to do course creation. Uh, here on the podcast YouTube channel, we actually offer bonus episodes, and I've actually shared now a few different ones on how to actually start and grow a course. Here at Think Media, we have broken into the eight figures of course creation, and so I am passing along the knowledge that I wish I knew when we first got started. So you can check all of that out here on the YouTube channel if you're watching this, or if you're listening while you're driving, walking your dog, uh, doing the dishes, you can always subscribe over on the YouTube channel to get more free content. We actually have a 
show that's happening called the Growth Video Live Show. That is happening on the YouTube channel. You can get access to that by just going over there for free and subscribing. Well, I wanna thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing here at Think Media. Thank you so much for showing up every single week. Thank you for your reviews and your comments. I cannot believe what we've been able to create together. We have some incredible content coming to you here on the podcast over the next several weeks heading into the spring and summer. So make sure you're subscribed so you can get all access to everything we're doing here at Think Media. Thanks for being a part of what we're doing and we'll catch you in the next episode. Did you hear that Grow With Video Live 2022 is back in person? This is your opportunity to network with like-minded people just like you, to make friendships, to make business partnerships. This is your opportunity to get in the room. They're going so fast, so make sure you get your ticket right now at growthvideolive.com.